Other interesting cultural news, you have Budweiser set the tone for 2024, mostly out of tune and tone deaf. Now this comes from the social media handle Budweiser specifically on X or Twitter. And this was a couple days ago, well, nearly a week ago, so it's got sad time to brew, pun moderately intended. Now, that being said, it only had eight comments, which, again, for a multi-billion dollar company, which used to have arguably some of the most effective branding and campaigns in history, that's almost impossibly bad. I mean, not to brag, but I recently had nine comments on video last week, and I would argue they're the best comments ever Many of them were critiquing me, but nevertheless, they were very accurate, and I'd say it pretty good. Nevertheless, we'll read this, and I guess using, they didn't actually use a, a picture. Hmm. But I guess I can't critique them, critique them too hard. I'm trying to find a software that will do production recording where I can do picture in picture to increase the quality of the show. I know that some people are asking for If you have suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Keep having issues with the camera I'm using. It's a HyperX Hiken. Um or I'm sorry, the Razer Hiken 4K camera. And I've tried XSplit and a couple of softwares, still not still not working. So if you give me suggestions, I'd also appreciate it. But nevertheless, back to the Budweiser. All he said was, quote, set the tone for 2024, order a bucket for the table, unquote. Which I suppose is a reference to a weird phenomenon in which you can get, <laughs> excuse me, bottles of beer in a bucket. Because I guess serving individual bottles is too much effort for the server. I, I it's, I guess it's a, it's not really that effective of a delivery method for delivering alcohol to a table if you think about it. I, I suppose it's good marketing because you have multiple beverage bottles with your logo on it, but a more effective way would be to use one of those, I forget what you call them, but if you're an alcoholic or you have a lot of friends, they have the big like tubes of beer where they just, they just take the swill and put in a big plastic tube and put the tube on your table and they can distribute them or dispense them at your will. But yeah. The beer, I mean, the beer bucket is always weird to me. But nevertheless, that got 9,289 views, which is terrible for a multi-billion dollar company. Not to brag, but I got 200 views on one of my Bud Light videos earlier this month. And I would argue my views are the, be the best audience on the planet. Quality over quantity, always, obviously. And they got 42 likes, which is also not great for a multi-billion dollar brand. But... Maybe on a little, and again, it's just set the tone for 2024. So they're insinuating you should start your new year, not by reading a book, going to the gym, improving yourself, maybe eating some vegetables, walking a little bit more, improving your spirituality. No, 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 no. Don't, don't start your new year like that. Start it by ordering mediocre rudimentary beer. I, it, start your year off as an alcoholic. Can't think of a worse way to start the year, which is another weird phenomenon. I never understand people who want to start the new year by being inebriated to the point where they actually are having a hangover for the first day of the year. But that's an unusual thing in and of itself. But would you want to start the year? I, I, I can't help. It might be the worst way to start a new year by drinking Budweiser. I, I mean, of all the intellectual property they own, I would also argue that's not one of the more tasteful ones. But nevertheless, would you, uh, if you drank for New Year's, did you drink a Bud Light or Budweiser? I, I'm not saying you should see a therapist. I'm not a big fan. But just know that you are loved, surely, by statistically speaking, there's probably so many in your life who cares about you. And you don't have to drink that. It, things will get better. I, I, it's, statistically speaking, it's most likely. But that sad thought aside, they did get eight comments. And perhaps I'm alone in this assessment. Maybe, I mean, they're all authentic brilliant, articulate people who want to, you know, chime in on this. I mean, odds are against that, but let's dive in. The first one comes from Paul C. Beer. And it looks like they did an emoji of a soup bowl or like the, uh, I forget what you call the cheese thing. Where it's like a bowl with a candle under it and there's cheese. And three glasses of beer. So using words was above this person's intellect. They just spoke in emojis, which as a guy, I think is always a little weird. And so his, he responded it, and with those emojis, going to his profile, he has 202 followers, joined in 2010, so been around the block quite a bit, and looks like he is reposting, he likes sports balls, he likes, what is this, 
the ability to win stuff if you repost things for Better Call of Saul. What the hell? A lot of random stuff. Eh, I guess it's, it has some original post. So it, it seems to be a real person. A lot of reposting. And Budweiser, to their moderate defense, they actually had an intellect to enough to actually respond to this person. And they said, that's the spirit. And I assume Budweiser is the actual person that liked this person's response. And hilariously enough, only 68 people saw his comment. Now going to another one, Cloud Nine Dreams Star Emoji. She says, I'm ready for MLB baseball to be back so I can have my buds at a game. But surely she means her friends. And Budweiser responded. Budweiser did not like her response. Actually, no one did. But it is there on the internet. And Budweiser said, March 28th can't come soon enough. Matt got one like. Presumably, she liked it. So let's go. To, and then she also commented again, separately, saying, I got you. And they responded saying, we're on the way. Which almost sounds like a threat. Bud Light is on the way. Dear God. I don't even. I don't. I, I'm not consenting to that. Bud, Bud Light, or Bud, in this case, Budweiser. Can't think of a worse way to start a party here. Actually, I just thought of it. For weeks, we would talk about the Bud Light sweet stakes for the giveaway that that swill. If you were to win, if by putting your name and they harvest your data, which business-wise, I understand that data is a very powerful thing. But if you were to win a case of Bud Light or a Budweiser, what you could do is you keep it hidden in the house. Obviously, you want people to see it. And if you have a party that's running late and you're getting tired, you're hosting the party and you kind of want people to leave, but you don't want to be a dick about it. So you're trying to think of a nice way to get people to leave without being bombastic or telling them it's time to go. What you do is just whew, dust off that case of Bud Light, bring it to the center of the room. Everyone sees it and they think, oh dear God, is that how the party's going to go? Oh dear God, no, please no. And they also absolutely rush out as soon as possible, making up a myriad of excuses why they need to go out. You know, they left the stone on, the house is on fire, whatever excuse they can think of. That that very well may be a good, not, thanks to this post from Budweiser, that very well be, may be the 13th reason we thought of or thing we thought of that you could legitimately do if you were to quote unquote win a case of Bud Light. Great way to quickly and effectively end a party by almost as a repellent by getting people to leave as soon as possible. Interesting. Now we go down more to the comments. Hunter Biden's official parody account says, quote, sounds great. I'll take a bucket of Coors Light, unquote. And they use a GIF, or as the youth might call a GIF. And terrible marketing. The peanut butter company did not trademark or patent this idea at all. Ridiculous. And it's just a GIF of someone reaching into a bucket of Coors Light and taking out a cold can. They did get two likes. And interestingly enough, I don't think this person's gotten banned because this person sounds familiar from other Budweiser and Bud Light posts. They banned, or at least Bud Light banned my profile, my personal profile at Nick Topping. They banned that on X because I had the audacity to respond to one of their posts saying, thanks for giving me the reminder to buy some Yangling. And I just had a picture of the Yangling bottle and the Yangling can in my podcast interview studio. And they banished me just for that. So I'm surprised this is actually allowed to stay up. I'm surprised you know, Budweiser didn't censor it. Scrolling down, someone by the name of Yvonne Franco says, quote, draft does not come in a bucket, unquote. Which, technically it could. You just take the big bucket of swill and just crank open the tap and it'll score, go into the bucket and just drink it like soup. Which, again, it's not, like you're, it's not like you're sipping a Bud Light and appreciating the nuances and the textures and the notes of whatever the hell they put in that thing. It's not like an aged, delicious, it's not like a whiskey or it's not like a bottle of Blanton's or anything like that or a lock and rule. It's... It's a volume product, and it has a modicum of alcohol to make it, I suppose, effective enough for people to feel inebriated. So, technically, Mr. Yang Ming Franco, I would say fact check wrong. You could put it in a bucket by just taking a bucket, turning on the tap, and fill it up with Budweiser Bud Light. And it would technically be draft. Nevertheless, next comment. Jesse responded with the juxtaposition of Dil Mulvaney and the Audrey, Audrey Hepburn hairstyle. Um, a diamond necklace is just in terms of the cultural phenomenon, Dil Mulvaney's made $185,000 for the Bud Light endorsement brand deal. And that necklace is probably worth more than my car. Nevertheless, 
Bill Mulvaney has the diamond necklace, diamond earrings, and some type of pink dress. And juxtaposition picture next to Dylan is a picture of the Bud Light blue can. That got three likes, which, again, uh, removing an identity from a brand, or when you have such two brands or two businesses that are so closely associated to each other, it is so hard to remove that as brand association. And people will argue, well, there's only one or two pictures in a video. Yes, but that solidified the business's fate in many ways. And again, it's not detrimental in terms of they lost 30% of their sales of the specific Bud Light brand. They're not going out of business tomorrow. They got 40 plus brands that Anheuser Busch InBev owns. So again, they're going to be around for quite some time. But in terms of the brand association of having been dual Mulvaney with it, I can't help but think that's going to take a couple of years, if ever, to actually re remove that brand from that individual. Let me know in the comments if you think it'll take longer than that. Scrolling down, Otis Draftwood says, quote, okay, horse piss, unquote. And it is a picture of the deplorable U.S. Senator Democrat, I forget his name. He is being serviced in the government facility. And someone photoshopped the hand from the Bud Light commercial or the Bud Light photo, where it's a hand holding the Bud Light in the aluminum bottle. That did get two likes. Is that it? Yeah, interestingly enough. Eight comments. So you had two good ones. So as a youth might say, they're ratio to say the least, which is even more interesting when you consider in terms of brand damage, Bud Light is the one that's really getting the full attention. Because again, the specific brand endorsement granted you know, Anderson Bush and Bev wrote the check was for Bud Light. That was the infamous Bud Light can with Bill Mulvaney's face on it, which is probably one of the most valuable pieces of business memorabilia or business history. You could argue in the past couple hundred years in terms, or meh, at least 50 years in terms of having an effect on a brand. I mean, that's cost them billions of dollars, not just, you know, stock market going down for a long time, but also the lost sales. I mean, in one quarter alone, they had $400 million just vanished in sales thanks to that campaign that they had. I mean, it was a short-lived campaign. It was only a couple days long, get, don't get me wrong. It, I feel like this, maybe ironically enough, the campaign started April 1st, but I can't but think in terms of the future of Budweiser, I mean, Budweiser wasn't hit as bad. That's something about 10 to 12% of their sales down compared to Bud Light, which is around 30%. And on social media, it's usually not as bad for Budweiser, and it's usually even less as bad for Anheuser-Busch because they all have the individual social media profiles. So to have so many people ratio the Budweiser profile, I actually thought the Budweiser profile on X Twitter would have actually gotten a little bit less critique as time goes on. But truth be told, I mean, it's been nearly, eh, yeah, it'll be the one year anniversary before we know it. And in terms of the social media and the cultural pushback, it still appears to be as strong as ever. So let me know in the comments, do you think Bud Light will actually, or rather Budweiser, the social media will actually maybe turn around in 2024? Do you think it'll be about the same like ratio and, or deplor and detrimental or critique comment ratio? As always, it'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in again today, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of January. So if you click that button, I really appreciate it. Also, giving a thumbs up and leaving a comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback. I do apologize if it takes me a little while to get the comments, but I always try to get to them and I appreciate the additional feedback. Also, and lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone, just stay safe and fight the good fight.